Ladies and gentlemen, I was born in 1990, and I have been following very, very closely the Georgia Bulldogs my entire life. In fact, my entire family has, and I cannot remember a time where there has been this much confidence, this much excitement surrounding what could be for a season for the Georgia Bulldogs. Maybe, maybe when it was Matthew Stafford and Noshawn Marino and that crew all coming back. Uh, for their junior year there where they were preseason ranked number one, things of that nature. But even in the back-to-back -back national championship years, guys, there was always some, okay, is, there's some doubt there. Uh, can can Georgia get the first one? That was kind of out of the blue, you know, when Stetson Bennett really became a guy that, that in that whole story of how it unfolded, that defense was next level literally all of them went to the next level all of them got drafted off of that starting 11 and then the, the next year just what it morphed into with the back-to-back -back, I don't know that there's been this much confidence going into a season unanimous preseason number one everybody says hey Georgia's the best program in the country not just a team but best program now with Nick Saban gone you got the best head coach in Kirby Smart You've got uh, a quarterback that could be the number one overall pick in 2025, a Heisman Trophy favorite in terms of the the betting odds. You have production all across the offense that is returning. You have four of five starting offensive linemen, and really when you add Micah Morris into the mix, you've got five guys uh, of the six that are your top six offensive linemen that are big-time guys. you got leaders coming back on – the defensive side to improve the defensive line and be bet a little bit better than they were against the run last year and guys like Nazir Stackhouse uh, and guys like Warren Brinson. And then, of course, in the secondary, All-American in the back like Malachi Starks. And even with guys like Brock Bowers and Ladd McConkey leaving on the offensive side to go to the next level, you have playmakers all over the place and the transfer portal has been utilized. So a lot of excitement about the Georgia Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. I'm Blaine Gilmer. Welcome into SEC Unfiltered, where today we are going to be talking about those Georgia Bulldogs, and we're going to be talking about the most important three-game stretch for Georgia in the 2024 season. Guys, every single game is important. However, there is one stretch of games that because of the circumstances surrounding it and because of the timing of it, during the season with this 12-team playoff format, with the committee, with different things like that, that the reasons it is so important. And we're going to dive in to those games. There's lots of different ways we could have went with selecting, okay, what is the most important three-game stretch? Because, you know, any any type of stretch that goes in there where you got, you know, you start it with a, a game on the road at Kentucky and you end at a road game at Alabama, that's an important stretch. I mean, that that's that's one stretch that you could have gone in there. Starting off with uh, the Clemson, important deal, right? I mean, you got to get to start the season off, right? However, there's a stretch down towards late October, early November that we're going to touch on and we're going to get to as the most important for the Georgia Bulldogs in the 2024 season but first before we get to that guys we do want to remind you that if you're looking for a sports book home if you're looking for a place to place your bets guys if you like to wager on games and you're looking for a generous welcome bonus offer then you can go over to mybookie.ag use the promo code secu just type in secu that promo code and you get a 50 percent welcome deposit bonus on your initial deposit deposit, of course, up to $1,000 for people who don't reside in the great state of Georgia, then guess what? 50% is half, okay? That, that's what that means. So you get over half of what you deposit. You get it right there, half of the deposit bonus to you. Guys, there's so many different ways to bet on mybookie.ag, whether it's the lines, whether it's the totals, whether it's prop bets, all of this kind of stuff. Until the NCAA outlaws prop, prop bets, you can take advantage of them on there because NCAA is working to do that right now. Guys, mybookie.ag is also, you can do it many different ways in terms of on your laptop, on your phone. 
It is a mobile friendly website. So head on over to mybookie.ag today. Use the promo code SECU and get that 50% welcome deposit bonus. And as bet, win, and get paid by mybookie.ag. All right, now let's get into Georgia's most important three game stretch of the season. And it starts October 19th at Texas. Yes, the Texas Longhorns coming into the SEC after being a longtime stalwart in the Big 12, coming off a college football playoff appearance where they ended up losing to another set of dogs, the Washington Huskies over there. But this is going to be an intriguing game for so many reasons. It has every element that you could possibly want if you are uh, in the in the TV industry, okay, if you're in a TV executive and you have these two national brands colliding in Texas, you've got the the background story of a few years ago with the Bevo and and Uga thing, where the the Texas mascot charged after the Georgia mascot, and then of course you've got two high profile quarterbacks. I mentioned that Carson Beck is a favorite for the Heisman. He is tied in the Las Vegas betting odds right now with Quinn Ewers for that Heisman Trophy favorite. And Quinn Ewers, a guy that he has been touted for a long time. We heard about Quinn Ewers for a couple of years, even before he got out of high school. Then he then he foregoes his senior year, goes to Ohio State, gets a bunch of NIL money there, leaves Ohio State, comes to Texas, and then ends up leading them to uh, back to back to prominence, if you will, and get some back in the national national picture here and this is a huge game for you got Steve Sarkeesian who was under the Nick Saban tree right he was uh he went kind of back to Alabama to rebuild his his reputation to to kind of be in that Saban Saban rehab if you will for coaches who had kind of kind of failed early on and now he's going to get a chance to Take on a coach who was a longtime assistant under Nick Saban in Kirby Smart, who now has taken that mantle of, with Nick Saban gone, being assumed by many the best head coach in the game. So it's going to be a chess match there. Sarkeesian, one of the better play designers, play callers in college football versus the defense of Kirby Smart and Glenn Schumann. Now, when it comes down to this, Okay, Georgia likely is going to be undefeated because they'll be favored in every game going forward. Even that game at Alabama, I think Georgia's the more talented team. Could Alabama, you know, play out of their minds that day? And could Georgia play a little tight and 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 something happen in Tuscaloosa? Yeah, they absolutely could. So if Georgia's coming in this thing with one loss, then this game is massive. For the Bulldogs. Okay. You don't want to go into this three game stretch that we're talking about right here with a loss already. You want to have one to, to kind of play with in your pocket here if you're, if you're Georgia, because this is going to be a, uh, intense environment. Okay. It's going to be the Texas fans are going to be wound up for this one. And guys, we got to see, uh, what is going to happen in terms of the Texas defensive line. Okay, that is something that is a question. I think Texas and LSU are the two teams that are probably the most talented teams that also yet have the biggest questions on their defensive front because of depth issues. Bo Davis leaves Texas. He's gone to LSU as a longtime defensive line coach there. Really, really good defensive line coach. But also you have the departure of Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy, two very, very talented defensive linemen that are now going to the NFL and there's not a ton of experienced depth behind them. It's guys who haven't been thrust into that, that role of, Hey, I'm the guy I'm going to uh, be this, this run stopper for Texas. And they were very, very good uh, uh, against the run last year, particularly with those type of guys there to, to stop the run. Georgia, I mentioned with all those people returning on the offensive line, Ernest Green, Dylan Fairchild, um, Tate Ratledge, you got Xavier Trush, you got Michael Morris all returning, and Jared Wilson at center is getting huge praise uh, across the board. So six offensive linemen that are considered 
the best unit in in college football collectively when you put them together. It's going to be a big challenge for Texas's front. And one thing that happens in road games, right? Things that travel. A run game travels, and being able to stop the run and play defense travels. Two things Georgia hopes to really do this year. Now, this game, and much like another game that I'll mention in this stretch, Georgia's secondary is going to be tested because, as we said, Quinn Ewers, talented quarterback, is going to be there. And Steve Sarkeesian does a great job of scheming guys open. And they have Isaiah Bond, who, yes, that Isaiah Bond from Alabama, who transferred to Texas, that carved Georgia up in the SEC championship game. So you can bet that that uh, Steve Sarkeesian and Isaiah Bond are going to be talking about some stuff that he did uh, at Alabama a year ago to be able to have success against that Georgia defense. And then also uh, you've got guys that Bolden and Golden that that have transferred in as well, those talented receivers from Oregon State and from Houston. So it's not a wide receiving core, wide receiving unit that has had a lot of time with Quinn Ewers, but at, but at this point in the year, they will all – be you know kind of a well machine together so how does the georgia secondary who's replacing javon bullard who's replacing kamari lassiter step up and be able to do things do guys like jacora thomas at safety how do how do they do um whether it is julian humphrey or ellis robinson at the corner across from dalen everett it's going to be interesting to see so that game october 19th at texas is a huge one in this first game of this most important three-game stretch. You get a bye week after that, and then November 2nd, you play the Florida Gators. And I know people are going to say, well, the Florida Gators, are they not going to be terrible this year? Yes, I think they will be. Okay, I think Florida will be awful. Um, I think Florida is going to lose a lot of football games, probably eight, nine football games. I mean, it's going to be a rough year for Florida. However, you have to have the same mentality if you're those Georgia players that Kirby Smart does in this game. He hates Florida with a passion. I mean, there is nobody that hates Florida worse than Kirby Smart. He just does. And and he's a guy who this game's always going to be very important. And Florida, listen, when you're in the desperate, desperate area that Florida is going to be in at that point, there's nothing that you can do at, as a coach to try to save your job than to win a huge game against a rival that you weren't expected to and, and get yourself back in good graces. That's plain and simple. They could be in desperation mode and, and just trying to get some hope out here against the University of Georgia in this game. It's the second game in a row away from home, so you have to go down to Jacksonville, okay, after you have just went to – so you go to Texas – you come back to Athens, you got a bye week, and then you go to Jacksonville. So two weeks in a row away from the Sanford Stadium crowd in terms of playing your games. And it's going to be, you know, it's just going to be a game where there's, it's always hard fought. It's always one of those that, hey, even at the beginning of last year, Florida was trading punches with Georgia there for a little bit, and then Georgia ran away from them. So you just have to have some maturity, which this team does for Georgia. But you also have to understand that other side is going to play very hard, okay? And they're gonna, it's going to be important to them being a rivalry game. So just the fact that it's sandwiched in between the Texas game and the next game that I'm going to mention is what makes it part of this most important stretch for the Dogs. Then on November 9th, you go on the road once again to Ole Miss. And Ole Miss is one of the most talented teams in the country this year, thanks to the transfer portal magic that Lane Kiffin pulled off, that Grove Collective over there really, really gearing up and going out and being able to be financially and program-wise attractive to people in the transfer portal, whether that's Walter Nolan up front, um, you know, whether – on, the, on that defense where they really addressed a lot, they were able to bring in Chris Paul from the linebacker from Arkansas is really going to help the second level of that defense. So, I mean, there are so many guys you just look up and down, I believe 10 guys they brought in over there to be on that defense that are going to be very, very impressive for Lane Kiffin. But I think the most impressive thing about this Ole Miss team is what they brought back. 
They got Jackson Dart back, okay, at quarterback. Trey Harris comes back, who I think easily could have went to the NFL, and you see him right there on the graphic. He's a guy who I think – I think Trey Harris is going to be the Bolitnikoff Award winner this year. I think he's going to have a tremendous year for Ole Miss. So this is going to be a challenge over there in terms of, okay, you got to play at Vault Hemingway Stadium. You're away from Athens for a third straight game. Uh, really, really physical games probably against Texas and Florida. And now you go on the road to face an Ole Miss team that, you know, like I said, they got weapons. They've got Trey Harris coming back, Jackson Dart coming back, Caden Priestcorn coming back at tight end, Ulysses Bentley at running back. They add Juice Wells from South Carolina, who's had some success against Georgia when he was playing for the Gamecocks. So they have an impressive group that they're going to bring this year to the 2024 season and and try to make some noise is Ole Miss. They it's kind of playoffs or bust for Ole Miss. But they they geared up for this 12 team playoff format. They had a plan. Talked to the head of the of the Grove Collective. They had a plan two years ago. That said, hey, by the time the 12 team playoff rolls out, we want to go all in and have all of our ducks in a row and all of our talent lined up and, and everything kind of put together to make a run for that 12-team playoff format. And a win over Georgia would greatly, greatly help their chances and could be a deal where this could be a game where these two teams are playing for a spot in the SEC championship in this game. So there's going to be a lot on the line. It's going to be huge in terms of, all right, you know, playoff seeding. It's going to be huge in terms of maybe an at-large berth. There's so many things that could be on the line here. Once again, that secondary, Dalen Everett, you got Ellis Robinson, Julian Humphrey, all of these guys that at the cornerback position are going to – Kirby Smart is going to put them on an island. That's what he does in his in his defense. He's not going to he's not gonna have a whole lot of bracket coverage. He's not going to have a whole lot of, you know, play in soft zone. He, he likes to get in people's face. He likes to play some man coverage. And there's going to be times where there's going to be one-on-ones with – Guys like Dalen Everett and Trey Harris, uh, guys like Julian Humphrey and Trey Harris, you know, Ellis Robinson. So it's going to be interesting to see that play out. And then, you know, hey, you got Carson Beck who gets to – that's what a having an experienced quarterback coming back is for games like this where you're on the road, tough environment, and him being able just to lead – that team behind a talented offensive line with playmakers on the outside like Dominant Lovett, Ra Ra Thomas, Colby Young. You got London Humphreys that has come in, Dylan Bell, who's a Swiss Army utility knife that can do all kinds of stuff. There's going to be so much talent on this field, you know, whether it's Tre- Trevor Etienne, uh, whether it's Roger Robinson, Branson Robinson. I mean, Andrew Paul, lots of talent in this game. And I'm so excited to see these type of matchups because guess what? In 2025, the schedule flips and Georgia fans will get to see Alabama come to Athens. You'll get to see Texas come to Athens and you'll get to see Ole Miss come to Athens. So an exciting time if you're a Georgia Bulldog faithful and guys, we'd love to hear your comments about this three game stretch for Georgia. Also like subscribe, turn on notifications, be greatly appreciated. We cover all things SEC here, but really heavy on SEC football. So if you want more on Georgia football, you want more on, you know, when the season comes, we'll have game previews and breakdowns, analysis, all that kind of stuff, live streams on the weekends. So right here, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications so you know when we do go live. And it's greatly appreciated. Remember to check out mybookie.ag and get that welcome deposit bonus today. But for everyone at SEC Unfiltered, I am Blaine Gilmer. God bless you. Uh, This is Easter weekend. I'm recording this. So uh, God bless you. And I hope that you enjoy this weekend with your family. And we'll catch you guys next time to talk more Georgia football, more SEC football right here on the best SEC entity on the Internet, SEC Unfiltered. (laughs) 